Ian at Arbor Fabricating here to demonstrate using PBW to clean micron filters. So in order to clean our Bruna basket with PBW, we're going to be uh, putting the PBW solution into this pot, uh, but because I don't want to mix up 10 gallons worth of PBW, I'm actually going to displace it with this uh, five gallon pot that's just filled up with regular water. And this way, when I put the basket in, it should help me to use hopefully only like a gallon or two of PBW. We'll find out soon. So PBW recommends that we use between one to two ounces per gallon um, in order to create a cleaner for a brew kettle. So that's what I'm going to use for the Micron basket. Um, I've determined that that's about, uh, that two tablespoons is actually 1.3 ounces. So that's what I'm gonna go with for now. Um, and again, mixing it with water, 100 degree water, it recommends between 100 and 160, so we're on the low end, but I think that'll work out just fine. Okay, so with our five gallon pot in, um, within the 10 gallon pot, within the basket that we're uh, cleaning today, uh, there should be five gallon displacement. So it makes sense that if I wanna go ahead and clean the bottom half of the basket, then, I need, then I'm gonna need two and a half gallons of water. Uh, giving it 30 minutes, and after that I'll flip it over, use that same PBW to clean the other half of the basket. So our 30 minutes of cleaning are up, uh, you can see the bottom half, uh, not quite half, probably should have used a little bit more, but just to illustrate exactly where I've cleaned to, I think I probably put in two gallons, got to about right here. Uh, so for the entire thing, I may need to use about three or four uh, gallon mixture of PBW. Of course, the other thing you could do is you could um, uh, get a certain vessel where you were able to uh, rest it on its sides, clean the sides. The biggest part uh, problem with all the blockage that I saw was on the bottom, so we've taken care of that. Uh, rinsed it with uh, potable water, and it's good to be used again. Okay, so today we're going to try to clean some brew filters with PBW. We've got two items here uh, that were returned for various reasons. One is this uh, brew filter. You can see. Uh, this customer actually had requested a hook, so they returned it to us, but somehow they either cleaned or used this filter because it's got some discoloration. I'm not sure entirely if PBW is going to take it out or not, but we're going to give it a shot. So the second filter is a glass car carboy dry hopper that's been pretty severely beat up. Rather than to soak uh, the dry hopper in PBW, someone tried to like bang hops out of it, I think. Shouldn't be any need to do that. I suppose you could try to um, open up both ends, push some hops through, but I wouldn't do that until after I had uh, soaked it. By soaking it, you're going to uh, have most of the work done for you. But it's another good example. You don't want to pack this with hops as tightly as you possibly can. If you do that, when it soaks, they'll expand, and you could have trouble taking this out, not to mention uh, problems with efficiency of hops. Okay, so we've just finished uh, soaking our filters in PBW. Uh, I went for about a half an hour, and I went at the top of the usage of PBW. I went two ounces per gallon, uh, and I also uh, hit it with hotter temperature, 155. Uh, recommended 100 to 160, so that's at the very top of that temperature. And as you can see, uh, this dry hopper came out incredibly clean. I steeped half of the brew filter, and you'll notice that the discoloration that we had there is also gone. But more importantly, whatever film could have been within the microns is gone, and that's what we really want to get rid of, because if, you, if we don't do that, we're probably not going to have the same efficiency. There'll probably be blockage. So yeah, resounding success.